So last time we were doing a giveaway for one of our stained glass kits and I've already picked out a winner. The winner is Marcia Ray, uh, Marcia, please get in touch with me. You are the winner, congratulations, and I would love to send you that stained glass kit. Thank you to everyone that commented and participated. Uh, for sure, we'll be doing some more giveaways in the future. Plan to do some more of these bigger giveaways for you guys. So for today's project, we're doing a project in two separate methods. One would be the copper foil method and the other will be using the hobby cane. Now you guys might know that we have been working with copper foil for most of this channel and most of our projects. And today we'll get to explore that hobby cane and how to go about the project using hobby cane. So it should be pretty fun. We're doing the same pattern in two separate ways. So if you guys are ready, let's get into it. We'll start off with the copper foil method. I started off with a right triangle with the two legs being six inches in length. From there, I drew a one inch strip across the top and from there, another one inch strip along the adjacent side and another, and finally the last one for a total of four strips with the triangle in the middle. And then we'll cut up the pattern and labeling them before cutting is probably a good idea. How's this come together? I already forgot. So I've picked out some of these iridescent glass pieces here. This one's more of a oyster pearl iridescent. I got this one way back when I started. I think we used this glass on the chill lettering project a while back. This is really cool. The surface again iridized just on that one side, but you can kind of see through it on this side too, so which is really cool. And I I think this is all the strip that I have of this one. Iridized blue, a couple of those. We've got this texture. It's very bumpy, pretty much impossible to cut on this side. So you turn it over, this will be the side you cut on. I also have this wispy glass here. We used a lot of this in the Game of Thrones dire wolf um, piece. I don't know, maybe I'm not feeling this anymore. This clear one. Then we're gonna go with that right there. All right, so I found two more in our glass pack, the packs that we sell. Never used it, but I think maybe it's time. Iridized on the back, the bubbly texture right on this side. And this one has some of the iridized coated on this sheet here, so I imagine it's just kind of randomly smeared throughout the glass. Very bright yellow on the reverse. I'm gonna skip this one for now, just because we have this ripply one right here and it looks very similar. So maybe this one for later. Yeah, so I think maybe we could do the yellow in the middle right here for these two pieces. This iridescent one for the outside and the triangle blue right there. File that down. Sometimes things don't break perfectly, but you can fix it. Nice sharp corners right there. Nice, guys. That looks really cool. Clean the glass pieces real quick with some alcohol. All right, we're wrapping our glass pieces with the copper foil tape. Now we're ready to set up for soldering. All right, so this is not working out as good as I thought. Actually, things aren't even lined up. So yeah, I cut it wrong and marked it wrong when I did the pattern kind of bows out in the middle section. We're gonna have to unpeel the copper foil and grind down some of the sides so they match better and then refoil everything again. Oh yeah, and also, since there's quite a bit of grinding right now, we're gonna have to get out the glass grinder. And of course, before we do anything, safety glass is always so just taking off the copper foil tape with the X-Acto knife and grinding down the extra side a little bit at a time, matching it back to make sure that I'm not taking off too much material. I peeled off more foil from the other pieces and grinded them all down until they all looked straight and correct. The mistake here was that my cuts on the glass pieces were off from tracing. If I had traced and cut each piece exactly the same, they would be proportional and we wouldn't need the grinder. 
We're done with the grinding and now wiping again with alcohol and rewrapping the missing sides with our copper foil tape. Now, if you do need a grinder, and most likely will if you plan on making precise pieces and projects in the future, we do have a special discount from Inland Craft. I will leave a link and info for you down below. We get $15 off their grinders, so check out the info down below in the description. Now we're ready to solder. Got the flux solder, 60-40. This is a filter absorber. It'll suck the air right through it comes out the back. This is a filter, so you don't have to wear a mask or maybe you could still, but I've got my iron right here, Hakko FX601, the best iron I use here. And we'll set the setting to 360. I like to start off with that if I need a little bit more heat at 410. So first we're gonna tack solder everything. I'll add some dots of solder just to keep the pieces together and then we'll go ahead and apply solder all around. All right, so everything's together, and we'll add some more flux and more solder to this top surface. All right, now we gotta clean it, CJ's flux remover or soap and water. Scrub well with the brush and rinse with water. And then we'll dry. I use fine steel wool to scrub all the solder lines to even out the shine and added wax to the entire surface. You'll see all the dark impurities come off the solder. So just keep working the wax in and it'll help brighten up that solder. And then we'll buff it all off. Since we have three jump rings with one on each corner, you can hang this up any way you'd like. And we're done with this copper foil project. Now, if you wanna make something like this, check out our stained glass kits. Links will be down below in the description. Now let's redo this triangle using Hobby King. All right, just stretched out that hobby came. It stretched out about maybe three inches, a little bit less than that, and it rips really easily. Not sure if you can even, um, you even need to do it, but let's try to put this thing together. All right, um, this obviously is not going according to plan. Uh, we got the H channel, the hobby came, pretty much the smallest size that you can buy. So I ordered that and thinking it would fit our glass, but the glass is too thick for that channel, so it won't slip in there. And the glass needs to be a little bit thinner, and that goes for both sides, it's the same width. So as of right now, these Glass pieces aren't gonna fit. If your glass is a little bit thicker like this one, just depends on the glass that you choose. This one fits perfectly. I think I'm gonna have to try a different size of glass. Let's see if we can get something that's a little bit thinner than those two and um, try to make that work.
So right now I'm working with two hobby cane pieces. One is the cap. I guess this is still the U channel where one side is flat and the other side has that slot channel that you can slip the glass right into. So this will be on the borders on the outside framing our glass piece. So we'll have the three pieces for the outside. And then the other thing we're using is this H cane hobby cane and it's an H channel. So you'll see the opening on both sides here for each of the glass pieces. So the outside, gets the U channel and then the inside will use the H channel. So it's looking really nice, nice and clean straight lines. But the problem is the inside channels, the H channels are pushing the glass out a bit just from the depth of that lead came. So I will have to grind down a couple of pieces here just to make them line up uh, more straight. Yeah, I think we got it. Let's do some soldering. That is so good. All right, there's a lot of scratches from the nails. Driving the nails right on the lead. Hopefully we can clean that off somehow. I'm gonna add a little bit more solder right in there and hopefully fix that. And then we'll flip it over and do the other side. Good. And we'll spray some quick clean to clean off the flux. So finally we got this project done. Felt like forever just with the glass sizes and all those problems. Super happy with the way it turned out. They both look fantastic in their own separate ways. For sure a lot shinier with this copper foil, but the lead, just the clean, neat lines for this project. I think the copper foil is a lot easier, a little bit more forgiving. So if you're just getting started, maybe try the copper foil method first and then try to play around with hobby came a little bit after. But either way is good, just your preference on the look of it. So just a little bit about the hanging and how you can go about it. We did put three jump rings so you're able to hang it, say upside down, hung from the top only, or you can just the corners and hang it on a windowsill or something like that. I wanted to make it like this just so you can switch it around. If you got bored of it hanging one way, you can switch it up and just play around with that. The last thing I wanted to point out was with the hobby came, the longest length of the came is on this side. And if you can see, I can actually wiggle this hobby came up and down, lifting it off of that glass. But on this side here where there's more joints, it's shorter in length, you won't be able to pull it and lift it off. So just make sure that when you design something that hobby came doesn't run too far and too long where you will have some kind of a stretch. The hobby came is not super stiff, lead is not that stiff. You will always have some kind of a stretch. The longer the piece goes, the more sag and stretch um, it will get. I didn't think about it at first, and so when I designed this, I left it this long. You wouldn't want to put a jump ring, say, right on that point and hang it off um, right at that center point. That's why we went with the corners, and that is much much stronger. You guys, I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. We just hit 30,000 subscribers. Really appreciate the three years that we've been here on YouTube. So thank you so much for that and making stained glass DIY what it is today. And also the kits that we've been selling. You guys have been supporting us completely on that. Lots of people getting their kits, people learning and getting into stained glass. So it makes me really happy. Of course, do more videos, do more giveaways. And lastly, the coffees. Thank you so much for those supporters, appreciate you guys. Have fun with stained glass, happy holidays, and have a great rest of your year. I will see you guys next time. We'll make some more videos. Take care.